If our boss walked up to you and I and said, hey, what are some of the methods that we're going to be using for scanning a network? It's very likely that you and I could rattle off several things that we might look for. And what I wanted to do in this nugget is present kind of a structured methodology that we could follow when doing scanning of network resources that'll give us a more systemized and ordered approach as we approach network scanning. Let's begin. I'd like you to imagine that you and I have been given permission and authorization to do ethical hacking and pen testing and vulnerability assessment against this network. One of our first steps in our scanning methodology is going to be looking for live systems, devices that quote unquote really exist either as physical machines or virtual entities on the network. And a very simple mechanism that can be used initially for doing that is simply using the tool of ping. And by using ping, we can send out a ping request to an IP address. And if we get a response, we know that there's a device at that IP address. And if we don't get a response, that means we may or may not have a device. See, some firewalls and other types of devices are programmed to not respond to a ping. Or maybe there's some type of access control that's preventing either the ping request from getting there or the ping response from being sent back to the attacker. And instead of the attacker having to manually do a ping request to all the IP addresses in a subnet, it's very likely that the attacker is going to use some type of automated tools. And there's lots of tools that can do what's called a ping sweep. And in a ping sweep, we send out a ping request to every IP address. So we send a ping request out to the first IP address, and then we send a request out to the second and the third and so forth. So in this diagram right here, I'm showing dot 11 and then dot 12 and dot 13, and this would be et cetera. And if we were doing a ping sweep of every single device on the 192.168.1 network with a 24-bit mask, we would start at 1 and we would end at 254, as that would be the valid IP address range for that subnet. So if you and I, from our Kali Linux box right here at dot .109, wanted to go ahead and scan the network, we could do so. Now, one of the tools I'd like to demonstrate really quickly is Nmap. And I've got an entire separate nugget for you and I on Nmap which has additional details and features of how it works. But just as an example of how easy it would be to do a sweep of the network, we can have Nmap do it in just a few seconds. And I also should point out that there's multiple ways of doing a sweep. We could do an ICMP echo request and wait for responses. But you know what? If we did that, some device that's been trained, hey, don't respond to an ICMP echo request, may not respond. But do you know what most devices on a network will respond to? They will respond to an address resolution protocol request. And the way that works is if the Kali Linux box using Nmap sends out an ARP request, which is sent out as a broadcast, and in that request it says, I need to know the layer 2 address. For the person who owns the IP address of 192.168.1.1, everybody on the subnet hears it, the device who owns that IP address responds, and boom, we got them. We know that that device exists. And if the Kali box repeated that for every single possible IP address in the subnet, it could easily identify all the hosts in that subnet. And again, one of the sneaky ways of doing that is instead of using an ICMP echo request, it can go ahead and use ARP requests. So on our Kali Linux box, let's go ahead and bring up a shell and let's type in nmap. And for most of these commands, you can use a dash dash help. And that provides us some documentation on additional options that we can use with it. One of the simple options I'm going to use with nmap is nmap space dash sn. What that's going to do is going to do a simple sweep of the network but it's not going to bother going any further into port scans, which by the way is a fantastic additional next step. And we'll demonstrate more of that in our Nmap nugget. But just for now, I want to take a look at doing a sweep of the network to see who's there. And we'll put in the network address of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And that's going to go through and look for all the available IP addresses in that network space. And we'll press Enter. And Nmap is done. It scanned 256 possible IP addresses, which would include 0 through 255 on that subnet. 0 being the network address space itself, and 255 being the broadcast address. It found 15 hosts and it took less than five seconds. And based on the MAC addresses involved, it identified that there's some stuff from Amazon. That's very likely an Amazon Echo. It found a USB to Ethernet module from Pluggable Technologies. It found several VMware devices. And that's just a really easy example of how we can do a very quick scan to discover what devices are present on the network. And there are literally hundreds of tools that we could use for discovering live systems on the network and multiple methods for making those devices reveal themselves including ICMP echo requests or ARP requests and other tricky methods that leverage the way the default protocols operate. The next step, once we identify live host on the network, is to then go ahead and identify what services or ports are open or available on those systems. And the question may come up, why? Why would we care? Well, if they've got port 80, we know they have some type of web service running. Or if they have port 21, it's probably an FTP service running. 
And there's lots of different traditional and also not so traditional methods we can use to actually scan for and discover available ports on a system. And we'll do more detail on that along with some tools involved in learning that information in a separate nugget. One of the challenges if we're doing scanning on a network, we're finding out what devices are there, what ports are open, is that we may be detected or identified if the company has any kind of functional intrusion detection and or prevention system in place. So as part of our scanning methodology, it would also be important to evade that type of detection. And some of the techniques we might use would include fragmenting IP packets so that if the IPS or IDS isn't reassembling those correctly or looking at them correctly, they might miss what we're actually doing. We could do spoofing of our IP addresses. Or when we launch the attack, we could include our real IP address, but also a bunch of other bogus source IP addresses so they wouldn't know where the real attacker is coming from. If the network is sloppily put together and they've allowed source routing, we could craft packets that would take a specific route through the network based on information in the IP packets that we send into the network. Another very popular way of evading is to use proxy servers. For example, we compromise one system in the company and then we can launch all our attacks from that compromised system. Or for daisy chaining, going through multiple proxies, we can have several layers of covering up the identity of who we are actually making the requests. Another one of our methods would be to not only identify what ports and services are running on a specific system, but if possible, do fingerprinting, identification of the operating system and or the service. For example, what type of web server or what type of email server is being run on that system? Because that gives us the information that might lead to a vulnerability on that specific type of application or platform. And then with information about what devices are up, what services are running and potentially what versions and applications are running, we could then do additional specific vulnerability scanning looking for weaknesses in that system. And the reason we wanna know about the vulnerabilities specifically is so that we know which exploits to launch that can compromise the system based on those vulnerabilities. And those could be vulnerabilities in the application itself from the operating system itself, or it could be based on a poor configuration of that system or of that application. And as we follow the scanning methodology, it's also helpful to document everything that we're learning and also very often to draw maps of what we're learning. For example, what does their DMZ look like? What does their intranet look like from a logical network perspective? The devices that we've identified with the services that are running, where in those networks do those devices exist? And if you, like me, are a visual learner, having that documented in some type of a graphical representation is gonna be helpful for you as you continue to analyze and work with the target system or network. And we've already mentioned, at least briefly, proxies. And with a proxy server or multiple proxy servers, we can hide the source IP address of where the attack is really coming from. Going through a proxy might get us access into networks that otherwise we wouldn't. For example, if there's a DMZ device that we've compromised, perhaps the DMZ device can get further access to the inside internal networks because we're going through a compromised device on the DMZ as a proxy as opposed to going directly from the internet all the way to the internal network, which may otherwise never be allowed by access control rules. And it's also possible to chain multiple proxies together. For example, going from point A to point B, from B to C, from C to D, and having each of those sessions encrypted and cloaking to make it even that much more difficult to ever determine from the victim's perspective where that attack is coming from. And if you and I are certified ethical hackers and we're doing this again with permission from the target as part of vulnerability assessment and penetration testing, we'd want to document everything that we find and deliver that to the customer as a final report. Now, if it's the hacker, on the other hand, the non-ethical hacker who's actually doing an attack against the company, those same types of reports are very valuable as documentation for continued access and further attacks against that system. In this nugget, you and I have taken a look at the scanning methodology, including a look at an example of a tool like Nmap that can be used for sweeping the network to identify active hosts. And if you're feeling, hey, I want some additional information on more detail on tools and methodologies for doing those, have no fear. We're gonna be covering those in greater detail as we continue through these nuggets together. Until then, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.